Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I have a new computer today. It's fully mechanical, looks like a hand grenade, and its name is Kurta, or Kurta in German. The name Kurta comes from its inventor, Kurt Herzstark. So it's his child, Kurt. Ah, oh, yes, that's where the name comes from. Uh, I bought this on eBay. By the way, that's the container where it is stored normally. And um, it has a problem because its crank fell off and uh, the main shaft here broke. So that's the reason why I got it a little bit cheaper than usual. And usual means uh, at the moment on eBay you pay, you pay up to $1,500 for that or for a similar models. There are two different versions in, in, in about two or three different colors. So this is the, the gray one. There are also models that are completely black. And the model one, this is the model two, uh, has uh, less uh, numbers, uh, less uh, decimal places. So that's the bigger version and you can see it's, yes, one handful. And if you are skilled and a little bit you used, get used to it, you can uh, actually uh, operate it with one hand and the other hand for the crank. Well, maybe even you could crank it with one hand. Okay, so that's the problem. The machine itself works perfectly, besides of that problem here. And that problem, I think I found the reason. If you look at the cover here, you can see this dent here. I think you can see that. It's from inside out and it's exactly where the crank handle comes. So I think this has been dropped inside the container upside down and that bent the main uh, shaft here and after some time and some usage it completely broke off. Okay. Before I explain how it works, I will try to fix it, of course. Now I have already removed one safety ring here, so we can lift that part off. Uh, it didn't came off that easily in the first time, because I think this shaft here was a little bit scratched. Maybe someone has already taken it apart and maybe serviced it and yeah, I just ground this a little bit with super fine uh, sanding paper and now it goes on like it should. So, okay. Now the repair. So let me zoom in a little bit. So you can see here Normally this uh, crank here has a pin that goes through. You can see the pin here inside. There is a hole in the shaft and exactly where that hole is it broke because that's the thinnest point and yeah, that's where things break. Now the problem is to repair that properly you have to remove this main shaft and that means you have to uh, take everything apart and yeah it has a lot of parts and a lot of small parts and I really don't want to do that. By the way I already unscrewed the bottom cover here so we can remove that case. I have the broken part here in this bag, so it's about three, it's three millimeter in diameter, that's there, and it's maybe five millimeters long. 
Okay, and my idea is to brace it to the part here. So brace the two parts together. <clears throat> For those who are unfamiliar, bracing is like soldering, but with a solder that is has a much higher uh, melting temperature. Uh, <clears throat> most, uh, it's also called hard soldering. Uh, you use silver solder or maybe brass or something with a melting temperature between 600 and up to 900 degrees depends on the material you choose. So I've chosen one that should melt at 670 degrees. So that means I have to heat that with a flame, but try to avoid heating up everything else. So what I made is this heat shield here. So stay here, thank you. That goes in like that. And I will cover the entire mechanism with aluminium foil and at least here on the on that kind of uh, that part of the shaft uh, I will wrap some wet clothes around it to keep the temperature here as low as possible. Uh, the soldering uh, should shouldn't take too long. I think in a couple of seconds that that's done and I hope it doesn't damage anything so there's just an aluminium piece with a hole. The good thing here there is no plastic even these buttons here the red and the black ones are made of aluminium so there is nothing inside the whole mechanism that actually could melt. <coughs> Um, the other possibility is to send it to someone who has a, who knows how to repair this. But um, the offer I got is 900 Swiss francs for a complete uh, service and restoration, and uh, that's definitely too expensive. I already paid a lot of money and. I don't want to double that with that expensive service, but I think I can do that. So let's see if I'm successful.
All right, I'm back from the garden shed, from my little house in the garden, and I think it doesn't look too bad. It's not completely straight, but straight enough to fit the handle here. And yeah, so I think that should work. So next step would be uh, drill a new hole for the pin that goes through the crank here. Um, I just noticed that I have to put on the top uh, part here because if the shaft is pulled out this silver ring here which used to be red but it's silver now because the red paint has fallen off um, this needs to be visible and when it is in it's invisible and it should be about like that. So since the shaft is now a little bit shorter, of course, uh, I need to move that about here to drill the hole. Okay, so here it is in working condition. You may notice there is a screw that wasn't there before. That's because I had to solder the, that shaft again. It broke after I drilled the hole here. Um, yeah, the problem is the shaft down here is only three millimeters thick. And uh, the hole is about 1.5 millimeters. That leaves us 0 0.7 millimeters on each side of the shaft around the hole. And that's exactly the position where the solder is, is. And the solder is, of course, not as stable as the steel that originally was there. So I thought I don't drill a hole at all but I cut the thread into the crank here and then I take a screw and that works too. Um, I will of course uh, replace that screw with a, with a shorter one, with one that goes inside here, so you won't see that screw anymore when it's finished. And probably I will also uh, put the second screw into the hole here so I can clamp the shaft from both sides. That's not a big deal. It's a two millimeter matrix screw. And uh, yeah, how are they called in English? Uh, wor a worm, sc worm screw that simply disappears inside. So that's just uh, for the moment to finish the video. Okay, now let's see how it actually works. Okay, I opened it again. That's very easy. Two screws, bottom plate comes off and then you slide off the case. So on the bottom plate there is an interesting detail. You can see it says made in Liechtenstein, customs union with Switzerland. So why did they write that on the cover? Well, I think the reason is most people have no idea, no idea where Liechtenstein is, so I will explain it. It's a very, very small con country. I mean, Switzerland is already small, but Liechtenstein is much smaller. It's a country that is 24 kilometers long and about 12 kilometers wide, and it has about 38,000 citizens. Um, I think they wrote that because, well, they are in a customs union. They also have the same money as we have. They have the Swiss francs. Uh, but uh, I think 
They couldn't write made in Switzerland, of course, and for a mechanical device that is built like a valuable uh, watch or something made in Switzerland would sound very nice. So I think they wrote that to have the Switzerland somewhere and people that are not familiar with Liechtenstein may think, oh, it's Swiss made. Okay, even better. I mean, it doesn't change anything of the quality. This uh, It is remarkable anyway. So, well, that's just a little detail. Okay, so let's first have a look on the bottom side. If you turn the crank, it does this. And you see this roller here snaps in after exactly one revolution and that's something you can clearly feel. Then we have this ratchet mechanism here that prevents you from turning it in the wrong direction. So you should never try to turn it in the other direction because you will then probably destroy that ratchet here and maybe damage the rest of the uh, mechanism. Okay, so what happens? We have two counters. Let me zero that. That's how you erase everything. Set it to zero. So you will see all zeros right now. The white numbers here, that's the revolution counter. If I turn it one, it shows one, two, three, four. That is practical for if you have to add on a lot of numbers, you know which numbers you already added. Or it is also handy, handy with multiplication. I will show you how that works in a moment. Then the black numbers, that's the result. And since I'm adding zero, it's still zero, even if I crank the crank. So let's reset that. Let's say we want to add 33. So we have three, three, and with the cover on, you only see the number three. I turn it once. One times 33 is 33. Next time it's 66 and one time more is 99. If we want to subtract, we pull that up, turn in the same direction, we're going back to 66, to 33, and to 0, of course. You have also noticed that it doesn't subtract by only changing the two numbers here. It adds the complementary number. So, for example, instead of subtracting 7, it adds 3. Is that correct? I think so. Okay, let's do another example. Let's say multiplication. Let's say we want to multiply 365 with 365. So, 365. Um, of course, I could turn this 365 times to get the result, but that's a bit boring. So, I set it to the first decimal place. That's the ones, and I turn it one. Two, three, four, five. We see that here. Then I go to the tens, lifting that up, going to number two. So here we need six times. Two, three, four, five, six. So it's 65 now. And then we need 300. So we go to the hundreds. One, two, three. 
So we have 365 times 365 is uh, 133,225. Okay, let's erase that. You may also have wondered what these dots here are. That's in fact just dots. You can slide them around to whatever place you find convenient for a, a decimal point or a, a division between thousands and hundreds. So for example, if you want to add dollars and cents, you move it here. So you have two places for the cents and the rest for the dollars. And you also have the same dots here for your input. You can set it between 3 and 2 for dollars and cents. Or if you want to, uh, to have it between thousands and hundreds, you set it like this. It's up to you how you use them. And these little dots are, in fact, one of the reasons why I didn't want to wanted to disassemble the entire mechanism. Because just out of curiosity, I removed that screw here. Then you can take out these dots. And inside the dots, I mean, you look, you see how small they are. They are, have probably one or two millimeters in diameter. There is a spring inside and a little steel ball that presses down on the surface so they won't move by itself. They are held by this spring and ball force here. And to get it back into this rail, I literally it literally took me half an hour for one dot. So I don't know if there are such uh, tricks here inside, uh, but I don't want to find out. For example, if you look here, you see this the little gear wheel here, and it has two clamps, two clips here that hold this in place, otherwise it would slide up. And I think to install these clips, that's Probably a little bit tricky. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't want to uh, try it. Here is a detailed view of the mechanism. That's the first number we can set. It is at the moment on zero. And if I turn the crank, it does nothing. But if I set it to one, one step down, it gets in contact with this rotating gear here that has exactly one tooth in this position and it adds one to this rotating uh, shaft here. And the rotating shaft then goes up to the number here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. I'm here, so I already added two. That's because I'm not on the... Okay, let's set it to, let's say, five. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. And that is done for all the numbers here when you turn the crank. And that's how this machine adds. Of course, if the first uh, goes to 10, let me see. I have it now on 5. Maybe we can see the second one there. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you have seen here, it clicked once because now we have 10 in the display. So that's the carry from one, from the ones to the tens. Okay, and if we subtract 
what happens then. So we have 10 in the display and we subtract 1. Let's see how that moves. So first of all, the center gear moves one position up. And we add 9. And we add 9 to all the, all the other positions. And we have 9. And that one jumped back to 0. So that means we have 10, we want to subtract 1, but we add 9 and remove the carry. So that's how we subtract in this case, adding the complementary number. Okay, I think that's enough for today. Thanks for watching.